Hey, Brent. Hey, what's happening? We're here. We're here. Wait, here we go. There we are. Here we are. Here we, here we are. There we go. All oh the my things. gosh. It's, it's so, I get lost sometimes in all the different uh, combinations of, of things that we do. So, uh, but we're here. It's got to be for a reason. We are <laughs> what, here for what, a reason. What are we going to do today? Yeah, so today we are going to talk about uh, a feature to ECS that we just released um, called uh, Deployment Circuit Breakers. Interesting. So yeah. what's a circuit breaker? Yeah, good question. Um, I so, mean, I'm thinking like kachunk, you know, or <laughs> the thing that that trips in my garage, you know. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, so we're not releasing that today, um, okay. but <laughs> That's good. but but and you know you, usually when I think circuit breakers, I think in the context of a service mesh because uh, I feel like oftentimes you know, it's referenced there. But specifically, this is around the ECS scheduler, and this by the way, this is a this feature is available with uh, EC2 backed tasks and or Fargate um, based compute. Okay, uh, cool. So, whichever you decide. But so when we talk circuit breakers, it's essentially to put it into few words, it's functionality that enables um, a quick way, a relatively quick way of discovering if a deployment has failed and with the ability to automatically roll that deployment back to the previous working version. When you say quick, what kind of time frame might we be thinking about? Because... Yeah. I've seen some deployments in ECS. This has been a pain point for me in the past where, you know, I, I send out a deployment and, and I've messed something up, you know, and, and it, it, it just sits there and chugs for a long time and then eventually gives up and, and go and comes back. But that's all a function of like how you have your cloud formation set and, and that sort of thing. And, and it's a long time and it can be painful to wait on. And you're saying this can fix that. This literally addresses that exact problem. And so, so this previous to this feature coming out, um, if you know, you wrote some bad code, you, you, your code's great up until this point where you decide you make a change and it's broken <laughs> and you deploy it. You have a pipeline that deploys it. It goes through. Um, previously had it, you know, been something that would basically cause it to flap where a task gets spun up, it runs, but then it fails and it just yep. keeps churning and replacing itself. Previously, that could have taken, uh, some time to, to, for that deployment to record as failed. I mean, even with cloud formation, it could, it could have taken a couple of hours, right? Yeah. So you could have just, and this is especially painful when your deployments are automated, Right, because then it requires you to either build automated auto remediation, or to actually go into the console or, or go through the CLI and, and manually modify it. So this addresses that exact problem with cloud formation, by the way, um, or uh, just if you're deploying through ECS. Nice. So, um, sorry, my headphones just did a funky thing. Oh yeah, they do that to me all the time too. That's why I had to start plugging them in. Where's my cord? Yeah, like, uh, sorry. Crazy. Uh, anyway, so going through. Um, it's like a shock to the brain, like a circuit breaker. <laughs> exactly, and my it just stops working, and yeah. now my brain has rolled back twenty minutes, and uh, <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. Uh, but yeah, so really, I look at this as a way to this feature now empowers customers using ECS to quickly discover failed deployments. And if they decide to enable the rollback functionality within the circuit breakers, let the orchestrator actually roll back to the previous working version. So quick example, I have version one, I deploy it, it works. I have version two, I update, I deploy it, it's broken. The circuit breaker after a certain amount of failed launch attempts, will then automatically roll back to version one. So nice. that's okay. So, feature. so just for clarification, my understanding of the way things are before this feature is 
it's it's basically a function of cloud formation to figure out that this deployment has failed and the only way it knows whether it's failed or not because cloud formation itself doesn't isn't in, you know intelligent about containers the only way it knows that it's failed is that hey this deployment's still going it's been 30 minutes or it's been an hour or two hours or whatever the the designated timeout is and the fact that it's still happening means it's failed so we roll back so it sounds like we've moved we've created some logic into the orchestrator itself into the ecs control plane to detect this flapping this you know uh, condition and then we can reach out from the orchestrator and actually affect change from that level that's that's actually really cool Bingo. So yeah, it, that, that's exactly it. And it, regardless of how you deploy, it, you know whether that's through Terraform, through cloud formation, through your own custom, whatever that is, um, the CLI, whatever it is, now that functionality lives in the orchestrator. So it's not tied to one way of deploying. That's awesome. And so one thing you know you had asked earlier too was about the timeout. Like how long does that take before it actually you know rolls back and recognizes failure. Well, this is the cool thing. Um, you know, so behind the scenes, ECS has, so this is a fully managed feature, meaning it, you don't have to think about, you know, after five failures, roll back. The orchestrator will determine based off of the size of your deployment, um, you know, how many tasks you want to run. That's when it'll determine what the failure threshold is. Oh yeah, interesting because I can see how. What if some, what if you're swapping ten con ten v one containers for ten v two containers, and seven of them are working? That's interesting. I didn't even think about that because I'm always thinking in terms of bad code because that's always my problem. I write bad code, um, <laughs> but you know if it's actually like some kind of problem, I don't know with with the EC2 instance that uh, the container is getting deployed to or or something, you know, sort of outside of the code, but it's still causing the deployment to fail, then that could actually, that could be a decision point for whether or not to roll back because, you know, you might have some success and you might, you might think if I keep trying, I might find more success. So that's yeah. interesting. So, so there, th there's a lot behind the scenes that happens, and of course, you know, we, you know, we're releasing this. Um, this is the first iteration of this feature. As customers give more input, of course, we will enhance it and make it even better. So, there may be cases that may not get caught, right? I mean, it does look. It, it wants to make sure that there are a certain number of healthy tasks, and at some point, if there are there is a certain number of healthy tasks, it may determine that that is an okay deployment. So there's a whole bunch of logic behind the scenes to, to figure this out. But um, the good news is you don't have to explicitly set what that threshold is. The schedule will figure that out for you. That's awesome. So with that, I think it would be cool to just walk through a demo. Yeah. Um, you know, and so we do have a blog post about this. And so in the demo, I'm going to, kind of walk through some commands that I've pre-baked here. Um, but we always start with building an environment. So I've pre-built an environment because that can take some time. And, you know, when I say environment, what is what is an environment? Well, we have our, our CDK code, which instead of defining this in cloud formation, um, I'm just using the CDK, which if you're not familiar with the CDK, it's a way to declare my uh, infrastructure in AWS or my environments in AWS as um, as code. So in this example, I'm using Python, but CDK has support for TypeScript, JavaScript, Java, uh, and, and .NET. So I just, I'm building a simple ECS cluster. Um, I'm building an ECR repository, which is where we're going to push our, our demo Docker file to. And then I'm just creating some IAM roles, security groups, and some other um, outputs that I'm going to use as I build uh, and, and go through this demo. And the whole goal here is to just showcase uh, I'm going to deploy a, a healthy container, you know, a healthy container image that's not broken. I'm going to break my code and then we're going to deploy that broken code and we're going to watch the circuit breaker actually happen in real time. Nice. Awesome. 
So let's start with just exporting some of these fun variables. Again, ECR repo, subnets I want to deploy my task, my service to, et cetera. And now I'm going to build my image. So we're starting with um, a Docker image of with the working tag. And let's look at my Docker file. I wrote a, a Flask app. Um, so it's just a, basically a simple web, web application, um, a very basic front end UI that's going to um, introspect the container. It's going to use the metadata endpoint. Let me show you that code as well. Um, it's metadata actually going to endpoint. Yep, Good. it's going to call the metadata endpoint. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Brent, and explain? Well, what that I is? just I just think uh, it's it's a really handy thing out there that uh, you know when you need to know information about uh, where your container is, its location in your in your infrastructure. The metadata endpoint can can be super useful. So I'm I'm gonna guess that you're gonna use this to look up like um, what availability zone you're in or what your IP address is or uh, something you know what subnet you're on that kind of thing. Yeah, that. So it's a great point to to the metadata endpoint is super powerful, especially when you want to know about kind of your container where it's running and kind of some some details specific to your, your task. Um, so we just actually recently released um, more, uh, there's there's more features with the metadata endpoint now. With, um, and so one of those is actually, I'm going to grab the, the version of the task definition that I'm oh, running. Oh yeah, that's handy. And the reason I'm doing that is in the demo, I'm gonna deploy, the working version is going to be number one and the broken version is going to be number two. So at all, as we deploy, we shouldn't see number two at any point. It should always just be at the first version because we'll deploy a broken one, number two, and it'll roll back to the, the first task definition. Awesome. So that's what we're doing here. We're simply calling the metadata endpoint. We are returning that to the front end app, and then we should get the current version of the service. So, that's it. Very simple. You can see I'm, I'm an amazing front end developer. This is about all the HTML I know. So nice. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too fancy for me. Sorry. Okay. So let's build the image. Um, and then we're going to push that image to our ECR uh, repository. So be quick. I already had it, it built. So it was all cached already. So we're, we're ready to go. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a task definition. So a task definition is a basically a JSON representation of my, um, my containers that I want to deploy, right? So here I have a container definition, which is pointing to that image that I just pushed, that built and pushed to ECR, defining my container ports, um, the execution role ARN. This is important because the execution role ARN is actually what allows the ECS um, orchestrator to make a call to ECR to pull that image down. So it's what's granting the permission between the orchestrator and um, uh, ECR. So that's what's there. And then of course, just I'm defining my, my CPU and, and memory um, yeah. requirements there as well. So the, the Kubernetes equivalent of this would be a pod definition with probably, yeah, just a pod definition. So exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And so the next step is, and so what I've done is I've just created a task definition JSON file. I used the end substitute command to just replace those values, which I dynamically set. And now I want to register that task definition. So I've registered the task definition. So I said one earlier, it looks like I actually already have already done this. So it's gonna be number two and we'll see number two to three. Noted. Um, so there's my task definition, it's registered. So now when I create a service and a service is ultimately in ECS is just a way to uh, ensure desired state of your service is, is being met, right? So if I want 10 replicas, you know, in Kubernetes we say replicas, right? If I want 10 instantiations of this 
task running at all times, um, the service is responsible for ensuring that we have 10 tasks running at all times. Perfect. So let's deploy that. And perfect. Okay. So we deployed it. And if I just walk through this, I'm setting my task definition, um, my cluster. So my cluster name is, is uh, test. I want to deploy five uh, tasks. And the thing I want to talk about here is the deployment configuration. So there's now going to be, um, there's a new uh, parameter to the deployment configuration setting with ECS. And um, so the, the default uh, deployment mechanism available is a rolling deployment with uh, ECS. And with the rolling deployment, you can set your minimum healthy percent, your maximum healthy percentage. Um, you can tweak this based off of the need, right? So this comes down to just your service. If it needs to be up at all times during deployments, you're gonna wanna keep the minimum healthy to 100, meaning it's always gonna deploy the new set before it starts killing off the old set of tasks to ensure that you always have your desired set of tasks running. And so basically this setup here is just, I'm doubling my count. Uh, I'm allowing for 200% of tasks to be running. So 10 tasks at one time, um, but ultimately it will then, once they're healthy, it will scale back down to the desired state. Nice, awesome. And the, the last thing to point out here is the deployment circuit breaker parameter. So there's, there's two options. By default, it is not enabled. So very important to know that while this feature is available, it's not enabled by default. So it's up to you um, to enable it to, to use this feature. So simply passing a, an enable flag to true and then the rollback um, parameter to true as well. So honestly, I would recommend enabling rollback even if you have your own custom logic built in um, unless there is some some case where it what you've built or, or what you're managing makes more sense to you, to your organization or whatever it is you're doing, then you could just set rollback to false. But otherwise I would just recommend let the orchestrator roll back for you when it detects failures. Yeah, that makes sense. So, and, and it's certainly look, the easiest choice too. Absolutely. And I'm sure there are a lot of customers out there that have this feature uh, prior to this feature coming out had to build their own custom logic on their own. So as you roll out the custom logic and you're ready, just enable rollback with true. So that's it. I have the service running. It's uh, it's good to go. Let's go to the console here and let's take a look at my services. So I deployed my circuit breaker demo test service and I have five tasks running. I'm gonna pick a random task and I'm actually just going to curl in the terminal, the public IP of that task, curl this 5,000. And here you can see my beautiful HTML. We're getting the current version of the service is circuit breaker demo test two. So this is the test definition that we're pointing to. And again, this just came from the task metadata API. So awesome. that's what, that's what my service is doing. And just to confirm, you can see here's the task definition for that service. So I'm not just making it up. <laughs> okay. But before I go on and break it, I want to take a second and stop. Brent, I tend to move fast. Is there anything you think I should go back to and touch on or, or elaborate on? I mean... No, I think this this all makes perfect sense. And if you've been using ECS for any amount of time, you know, the relationship between task definition and service is, is pretty, pretty basic and pretty obvious. You have you have a, a, a task defined how you want your containers to run. And then you have your service defined as how many of those tasks do you want running? Um, you know, I can imagine that uh, ordinarily you might put like an ALB in front of this with a with a target group or something like that. But because of the way this feature sounds like it works, that that whole aspect of of running and managing a service probably doesn't even have to change. 
So yep. all that stays exactly the same. And it's just a matter of, you know, when those targets, when we think we need to add them into the target group, the only time mm -hmm. that's going to happen is when they're healthy. And we're talking about detecting tasks that aren't going healthy, right? So they, yep. they, they come up. I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've like had to chase down tasks that I'm like, where are my new tasks? And it's because in the console, you know, they're, they're not healthy. They're, they're getting killed off and they're going into that other tab that I, that I never think to look at, which is like stopped tasks because they've been killed. So, yeah. um, so yeah, like I, this is all such a such at the early stage of the deployment that none of the other infrastructure or anything will even probably be aware of this change. Yep, and it, it, I'm glad you mentioned the ALB. So this functionality works. You know, if you're behind a, a, a lo an application load balancer, network load balancer, whatever it is, it, nothing changes from your services perspective. It's just you now have intelligent deployment logic built into the orchestrator to help you with determining failures and then rolling back. And by the way, uh, Brent, do you know how you get this feature installed on your ECS cluster? Do you just check a box? Yeah, not even. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just there, right? Oh, like, that's awesome. What version of ECS do you have to be running? Oh, that's my favorite question. <laughs> My favorite question, because you don't know, right? That's right. Trick version. question. There are no <laughs> versions of ECS. <laughs> yeah. Right. The ECS agent has versions, but of course, of course. Yes. The, the, the control plane, this just, this is available. So you, that's you know, right. the, the, that's the nice thing about ECS is you don't have to think about upgrading your control plane, upgrading your cluster and all that. Exactly. So you can start using, if you're a customer and you're watching this video or reading the blog or any of that kind of thing, you can start using this right now. This can solve your problems today. So yep. awesome. Yes. Um, all right. So now I have my Docker file. I'm introducing a, a broken uh, change. This is, you know, kind of a, a cheap, easy way to do it. But instead of, you know, breaking my code, I'm just going to say in the Docker file, when you start up, exit with an error code. Yeah, see, so you're so good at this that you you have to come up with a command that will actually break things. Meanwhile, it's me, it's just typing, and I, you know, break things without even intending to. You know, you're, you're too kind, Brent. It's just, it's simply not true for me, but I appreciate that. Okay, so you saw we have our broken Docker image. I'm going to set my, so if I echo ECR image, I'm now changing the tag to broken. And we're going to just build and push this latest update. So again, this is my fix, my fix, my 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 breaking change. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, do something uh, as soon as I figure out what I broke. Uh, you missed the dot. I did. PCR image. I just saw that. Thank you. Yep. And then we will Docker push. Okay. So we've built our, our latest um, change and we're now going to deploy it. Cool. So update the task definition. So if I look at the task definition now, you can see here's the image we're pointing to. We're pointing to broken. So we're gonna register it. Uh, let's make sure that looks good. Yes, it's registered. So you can see we have our third revision. Mm -hmm. And now what I want to do is make sure there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to update the service. So hopefully my command works. Yeah, I say I had a feeling <laughs> that was gonna happen. Um, so let's see. Service. Let's see, is that forgive me, I'll fix it. Should be quick right. here. Where's my doing it live? banner <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it live uh so let's see i think i don't even have to update the deployment controller let me yeah i don't think so yeah there we go okay Bingo. so we've updated now now for the the 
the fun part. And so for this, I'm going to pull down um, some code here that I already wrote. And of course, now I can't find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I want to just get the details on it. So let me just find, you can see I have all this really great stuff. There it is. Lots of notes. Lots of notes. All right. So we're going to say this. And then what was the name of my, my service was this. And perfect. All right. So we're going to make it pretty. And I'm actually going to do this. We're going to go type it to JQ. And then we're going to go services. And now, as we see the services here, really quick, you can see we have our deployments. Okay. So I'm just checking the status of a service with the CLI. So we have our primary deployment, which right now is pending. So five uh, tasks are desired. We see no failures yet. And here you can see, so this is, again, the primary, oh, yeah. and this is what's active. And I see the difference in the task definition section. So yep. yeah, active has version two of the task definition. Uh, what was it called? Primary has version three of the, of the task it definition. Exactly. And also take a look at the rollout state. So these are new outputs now that are available to you um, from, from the orchestrator. So we have the rollout state, which is going to be in progress, pending or failed. I'm sorry, complete. In progress, completed or failure. And you can see our previous one was completed. Let's run it again. And so we can see, look at this. So now our primary deployment mechanism has failed five times. Okay, so it's still in progress. It's trying to deploy these services or these tasks, but we still have our active. Look, my count yep. hasn't changed. It still remained in that state. And you can see five are running. Look here, I still have zero running. So obviously it's coming up. It's not able to, to work as expected. So now we're at seven failures. And also what I'm gonna do, actually let's run that curl command again. Take a look. So we're still on version two, yep. right? So you can see my application still healthy. It hasn't gone anywhere. So what's going to happen in the next minute or two is we're going to hit a threshold where the scheduler has determined this is our rollout state is not successful. We're, we're failing our deployment. So now we need to roll back because I enabled that. And we should see shortly what that looks like. Um, so it's it's coming. We're just we've got to wait another minute or two as that uh, as that comes in. Well, while this is while we're waiting, let's just mention that um, one thing to note. It looks like you were uh, creating and updating the service using the ECS command line uh, yes. or the the CLI. But what about people that, um, you know, might want to do this, like they manage it with Terraform or something, you know, else? Uh, would they be able to pass in these, you know, the same kind of parameter, uh, you know, enabling circuit breaker and rollbacks? Yeah, so the um, the functionality, it as far as availability, um, with the Ter like Terraform, for example, this just depends on when uh, Terraform enables, you know, this functionality in their code base. Um, True. So and so with CloudFormation, it's it's the same thing. So as soon as we have the availability with uh, CloudFormation and um, uh, and and this particular uh, feature, then yeah. and then it'll be it'll be usable that makes sense so like this is this is like added to the sdk and available and then it'll get rolled out into those things that work off of the sdk um at whatever pace they normally go out cool. exactly exactly so take a look here so we can see now our deployments we're back to our yeah. previous deployment 
primary. I so the the term primary got shifted back to version two. That's yep. cool. Yeah, and it, it so that that changed. Now I I moved so slow that I actually I missed. Um, I'm sorry. I missed it showing in a failed state. No, that was my fault. But it's okay. I the idea is the rollback happened. Our rollout state for our desired deployment uh, went to failed. And then the scheduler triggered the re, you know, deployment of the uh, the previous. Yeah. yeah. So if if you didn't enable rollback, would we just see that version three stuck in failed, and that would be the end of it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It would just remain in a failed state. Yeah. So then it would be up to you to to detect that and react to it with your own logic. Gotcha. Exactly. Exactly. So also th this, um, uh, the state of your deployments, this will also emit to um, EventBridge. Oh, so nice. if you want to trigger SNS notifications, you know, to, or trigger a Lambda function, you have the power of EventBridge to build on the automation here as well. Very cool. So just another cool thing to point out. And then you can see in the events, um, you can see here is where our deployment failed. So tasks failed to start. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it rolled back. It was, you know, rolling back. And then the rollback was successful and our service reached a steady state. Nice. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it seems like something that is almost trivial or, or kind of simple, but it's super helpful and it's, it's super helpful because you don't have to think about rolling back deployments on your own. And, and how are you going to manage and maintain that? The, the scheduler handles all that for you. So you don't even yeah. have to think about it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's going to save a ton of time for customers to, you know, fix and detect their bad deployments. Um, you know, if you if you push code and it, and it just automatically goes out, which is is my favorite way of doing things, you know, just uh, go ahead and ship it. Um, then you know you want some you want a little bit of protection. So being able to automatically roll back uh, and just have that functionality be managed for you is uh, pretty great. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's really it. I I wanted to see if I could. Uh show an image let's see I do i do have an image of the failed deployment and i i would like to show that if i can find it okay. uh, but i let's see i may not let's see <laughs> my computer is is moving slow but that's okay i mean i i think we we oh right when i right when i was about to give up it showed up oh all right so it's it's not going to be here though so i'm going to reshare my screen <laughs> uh let's see here and i just want to show what that looks like and naturally let's see here anyway let's see i can make it really big i'm going to share my entire screen and it's going to be super whoa enormous but yeah, that's still too small. It doesn't work. That's okay. Anyway, so the idea is just to show you, you can see the rollout state is failed down here. It's probably impossible to see. But. I mean, I can see it, I can, especially because you kind of highlighted it. Um, but yeah, it showed failed and then it showed in, in progress above that. So yeah, that was just a failed attempt to show a failure. So <laughs> <laughs> how meta of you is, is that image going to be in the blog? It is. Yep. That image is in the blog. So again, as you walk through the blog, you can walk through this on your own um, or you can just see exactly, you know, what it looks like uh, in the text as well. Awesome. All right. Uh, so if you have any questions about about this or really anything else container related on AWS, uh, hit us up on Twitter. Our Twitter handles are right here. Real Adam J. Keller and Brent Contained. <laughs>
And we're laughing because we never get the direction right. The never. First time. It's... So, uh, so, yeah, join us for other Containers from the Couch sessions. We are typically on air uh, noon Pacific or 3 p.m. Eastern. That's the same time uh, if you don't want to do the conversion yourself. <laughs> and uh, twitch.tv slash AWS or youtube.com slash Containers from the Couch. Uh, subscribe and you'll get alerts to anytime, uh, anytime we go live and until the next time. Perfect. Thank you. See ya.